Hi, my name is Mrs Chambers and I'm really excited to be teaching you today. In the last lesson, I set you a challenge. I asked you to find a plate and cover it with biscuits. And together we discussed what fraction one biscuit would be and what fraction three biscuits would be. The next part of the challenge was to see what would happen if you used bigger biscuits. What did you find out? Yes, the bigger the biscuit, the more space it took on the plate. And therefore we needed less biscuits to cover the entire plate. Well done. Okay, what about the next, bisc uh, the next question? So can you use a range of different size biscuits together and why? Can you do that? Did you find out? No, you can't. Why? Well, let's remember our stem sentence. The whole has been cut into so many equal parts. Different size biscuits would not provide us with equal parts. The parts would be unequal. I'm so glad that you've completed the challenge. Let's move on to our new learning. We're going to be learning about fractions as numbers. Have a look at this glass. What do you notice about it? Yep, it is the same size all the way up. Anything else? Yes, it has marks drawn on it. Can you see how many parts this glass has been divided into? Yes, that's five equal parts. I'm going to start to pour the liquid into the glass and I want you to say stop when the conte container is one fi fifth full. Stop. Ah, okay. So, what have I got in my glass? How full is it? Yes, it's one fifth full. Let's have a look on the screen. So here's my glass. It's been separated into five equal parts and I am going to pour water in to one fifth of those parts. And there's my notation to show one fifth. OK, I'm going to carry on pouring now and you see if you can tell me how much water I now have in my glass or how much liquid. I'm going to stop just about there. How much do you think I have? Yes, I have two one-fifths, or I can say two-fifths. And on the slide, there we go. And there's the little notation that shows us two-fifths. Is this a fairly small or a very large part of the whole? What do you think? Yes, it's a fairly small part of the whole because it is less than halfway up the glass. Carry on. How much liquid do I have in my glass now? Yes, three one-fifths or three-fifths. Here it is on the slide. now. Yes, I have four one-fifths or four fifths. Is that a large part of the whole or a small part of the whole? Let's look on the slide and see if it helps us. Okay, there it is reaching four one-fifths. We write that as four fifths. Is that a small part or a large part of the whole? Yes, I agree. It's a large part of the whole. OK, and finally now. OK. Yes, the glass is completely full. I've left a little lip at the top so it doesn't over overflow. So this is five one-fifths or five fifths. So the whole of the glass is full. Let's see it on the screen. Here's our notation. Okay, so the whole of the glass is full. Okay, what is the same and what is different about these two representations? So have a look at the one on the left and the one on the right and compare them. 
I'm going to just pause the video so you can have a little chat. Okay, so what did you find out? What's the same about them? Well, both of them, the whole has been divided into five equal parts. On both of them, the fraction notation is the same. You can see fractions from one fifth to five fifths. And that the representations are the same size. So both of them are showing the same size blocks. What about what's different? Yes, there's something different in the notation. On the one on the right hand side, there is a zero on the baseline. OK, so on the container, that would show us where the contents would come to if the container was completely empty. So it's a baseline that shows us that zero that shows us that there are no fifths. OK, well done. So does this notation remind you of a math structure that we often use? How about now? How about now? What's the same and what's different about these three representations? Pause the video and have a little talk about it. OK, they are all the same size. They are all divided into five equal parts and they all start at zero and end with one whole or five fifths. What's different? The orientation. Two of them are vertical and one is horizontal. Let's look at this using a strip of paper. So here I've got my number line. OK, you can see with my peg, I'm going to move it up. So I've got one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. OK, I'm going to take my peg and put it back down at zero. And then I'm just going to turn it around. So I didn't do anything to it, I just turned it around, changed the orientation, but I can still continue to count. So there we've got zero, one fifth, two fifths, ooh, three fifths, four fifths, and five fifths. Okay, so it didn't do anything to the number line at all. All I have to do is turn it around that way or turn it around that way. It stays exactly the same. So let's look at this number line. It's called fractions as part of a whole. It is showing a line that has been divided into five equal parts. So each one of those equal parts is worth one fifth. As we move along the number line from zero to one fifth, two one fifths, three one fifths, four one fifths and five one fifths or one whole. We can see that as we move along the number line from zero, the amount of fifths that we have increases increases each time we move along the line. Let's have a look at the next one. So when we're using a number line, each point represents a number. The number zero, the number one fifth, the number two fifths, the number three fifths, and so on. Here we go, we can see those fractions on the point. Okay, so any part that is below one fifth is less than one fifth. And any part that is above one fifth is more than one fifth. On this slide, there are three representations of tenths. You can see them re it really clearly, clearly on two of the representations, but on one, it's less clear. So within the circle, you can see that the circle has been divided into 10 equal parts and each one of those is labeled one tenth. On the number line, you can see that the number line has been divided into 10 equal parts and each one of those has been labelled a tenth. With the shapes, it's harder to spot the tenths. So how could we do that? Yes, we could think back to other lessons and start to try and visualise. So can you see 10 equal parts anywhere? Yes, I can too. I can see that there are 10 columns on two rows, but I can see that there are 10 columns. And within each of those columns, there are two shapes. So for every 10th, it must be at one column or two shapes. Let's see what happens to these columns and let's see what happens to the circle when we move along the number line. 
When we start at zero, you can see that none of the shapes are shaded and none of the parts of the circle are highlighted. That's because we're at zero. Once we move from zero and start to travel along the number line, we should increase the amount of shapes and increase the amount of shaded parts of the circle. Let's see if that happens. Okay, so we've gone from zero to one tenth. And we can see that two of those shapes have been shaded and one of the parts of our circle has been shaded too. Let's move along a bit more. Here we go, we're at two tenths. You can see that two columns of the shapes have been shaded and two parts of the circle have also been shaded. Three tenths, that's right. So we've now got three columns of the shapes. So although we've got sh six shapes, we have got three columns of shapes and we have three parts of our circle shaded. Okay, make a prediction. What's going to happen when I move to four tenths? Exactly. Four columns of our shapes will be uh, shaded and four parts of our circle. Let's just check. Brilliant. Let's move to five tenths. and six tenths and seven tenths. So we've got a larger part of our fraction now that is shaded either in our shapes or our circle and we are a long way along the number line. Here we go to eight tenths, nine tenths and we know that when we get to the numerator and the denominator being the same, then the whole should be shaded. So it are all our shapes, all our parts of our circle and right the way to the end of the number line. Let's just check that that happens. There we go, we were right. Now is your practice question. So can you draw your own number line to represent tenths? How could you keep the parts equal? If you were using a ruler, each part might be a centimetre long and then you could ha have 10 centimetres. Can you draw 20 dots? And then can you identify where four tenths would be on both of your representations? OK, so you need to, you need to be drawing your own number line to represent tenths. Draw 20 dots and then identify where four tenths would be on both of your representations. Are you ready for a challenge? Can you represent four tenths in a range of different ways? Think back to some of the representations that you've seen in other lessons. It's been a pleasure being with you today and uh, have fun with your challenge question.